market has kind of cooled off a little bit, but we are not seeing a huge dump. I know a lot of people are thinking there's going to be some sort of huge dump, but we haven't had that yet. What I did notice is that BNB is uh, up quite nicely today. I feel like BNB hasn't gotten a lot of love compared to the other top cryptos. Uh, but let's, t uh, you know, today let's just talk about what do uh, people think uh, makes a 100x crypto, meme coin, whatever it is. I want to hear your opinions. But first, Jake, what's up, baby? How you doing? What's up, my brother? Happy hump day, our favorite day of the week. Uh, happy to be here on the stream. Crypto's cooling off, but it's crazy that like cooling off is still a, a 50,000 plus Bitcoin and a $2,900 ETH. It's a nice cooling off period. I'm, I'm happy with these cooling offs. Yeah, it's a nice place to be, right? I mean, I know a lot of people are expecting a huge dump and like, you know, we're just trading sideways. That's consolidation. And to me, that's that's bullish. You know, usually when something trades sideways for a long time, it's getting ready to, uh, you know, take off the bulls and the bears have decided on a price and uh, things are looking up. Now, I remember back in 2021 before we had that huge parabolic run. Um, I remember, uh, you know, what is it? Bitcoin went up to like, what, almost like 59K, dumped down, then went to 69K. Now, obviously, we're not in that year. Uh, but Jake, do you think that uh, we could have some sort of major dump before uh, another rally? I mean, typically, that's how it works. But I don't even think the bull market's really started. I think it all starts after the Bitcoin halving. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you don't want markets to go straight up. You don't want meme coins to go straight up, right? Whenever I see a meme coin that's for the first three, four, five days, go up to a $16 million market cap in four or five days, like what's next? Well, probably a major dump. So you, you, you do want these consolidation periods because it gives whales a chance to take profits. And as you know, I'm sure we've all been uh, watching a token. We didn't get in early, but we saw it, you know, a really solid token launch, have a good run up. And what do we do? We wait on the sidelines for a better chance to enter. So uh, from my experience, you just, you don't want anything to go straight up forever. You want it to go up you want it to have these dips. You want it to consolidate. And then that gives people a chance, you know, whales to take profits and people a better entry point, which is something that we all want because it gets the project more holders. Yeah, absolutely. I never mind when something goes absolutely parabolic and, you know, has some sort of retracement. It's just the nature of the game. And to be honest, like the longer something goes up, the more aggressively something goes up in a shorter amount of time, you know, I mean, it's just going to have a big pullback and that's okay. Right. That's part of the game. But it's always interesting to see the uh, sentiment shift, you know, from like bullish to bearish to I don't know what the hell is going on especially on X, but that's part of the game, baby. You know, if you've been in this space for at least a little bit, you've been uh, paying attention to what's been going on. It's just part of the game and it's just part of the space. Uh, but with that being said, let's get some speakers up here. Uh, first, we have Wadi, then we'll go from Wadi to Jarek, then D Ganja, and then Dr. Crypto. What's going on? What's going on, Ronnie? What's going on, Jake? And everyone... So, I personally believe that what makes a token 100x, definitely community has to be super strong. Um, because if they start shilling everywhere, boom, it helps. Um, there has to be marketing strategy. If there is no marketing strategy, then that token is not going anywhere, in my opinion. Um, and other than that, I think that's it. You know, obviously, there's the, if they have a will group, but that's supposed to be insiders trading. So I'm not supposed to know about that, supposedly. But that's it. That's all I got for now. Yeah, I definitely think marketing strategy is a, a huge part of all of it. You know, I know a lot of projects, um, you know, they have to, you know, they have to go into the bag a little bit, maybe pay for influencers, tweets and stuff like that. But not even that, just like uh, trending and then, you know, uh, coin listing sites and all those sorts of things. I think those things are so important. And, you know, spacing those out can be tough sometimes. Like you don't want to blow your wad all at once, but it is what it is. Great point, Wadi. What's up, Jared? Hey, man, what's going on, everybody? Good to have you, brother. Good, man. I think it kind of, you know, what kind of makes it kind of both, you need to have a good marriage of both. You need to have a good community and also good devs, too, as well. You got to have, there's got to be some form of plan, right? You do got to have a passionate community, but, like, what's the plan? What are we going for? If you're a mean coin, you know what I mean? Uh, definitely, there's got to be some form of, like, how are you going to achieve, like, mean coin status? And are you going to, like, you know, keep pushing forward on different types of exchanges? And are you going to try to build certain things? Just I don't know. You just got to have a good marriage of both. And it's very rare you find both. So when you have both, right, 
you try to hold on for kind of like dear life though, but it's definitely kind of a perfect storm, man. It's kind of very rare to kind of have those kind of wins. Yeah, you know, what's interesting is that we've seen like a lot of like 100Xs, 1000Xs, like some of these crazy cryptos that hit these insane market cap sizes like for like no clear reason, right? So, dude, definitely like a lot of luck sometimes, for sure, Derek. Uh, what's up, Diganja? Yo, uh, similar thoughts, man. It's got to be like, uh, there's got to be some kind of development, some kind of tech behind it, but then there's got to be that hype. But then, you know, we see things that go one way or the other. Like when Doge and SHIB made their run, there was no tech behind it. And now SHIB is trying to put some uh, utility behind their coin. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. It's really freaking hard to say. It's it's kind of like just a toss-up uh, at some points. But if you're like... If you got your nose to the ground and you're doing your research, then I think that's the biggest thing in sniffing out those hundred X's, but I'm no expert because I haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. Same. Like you said, like, yeah, I mean, we've seen like SHIB do some insane numbers and then they're finally getting some utility, you know, or they've had some utility. They've had quite a bit of utility. I suppose it depends on what you consider utility, but you know, Shibarium also like, you know, I mean, obviously it's like, top tier utility so um yeah man uh next we have dr crypto what up what up what up what's up with y'all man first of all the what question up, what's up baby how y'all doing man the question the question you know what we're all gonna give the same answer because that's exactly what it is what makes a meme coin 100x or more one is community two don't c create a money grab if you're gonna create a token in the meme space and you 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 want to do zero zero taxes that's cool but have your own money to start out the marketing have a few wallets in there that you're gonna actually sell to pay for the marketing don't just leave it on the community yes you want to have a strong community the only reason that the community is gonna be strong is because they're seeing returns and they're excited and they want to tell everybody no community is going to be excited when there's nothing going on so don't come and ask me to shill and you've got nothing to pay me because you're waiting for me to build the the, the business up for it to be to come out with something no have a plan come out with some money start it up and hopefully you recover your money that you you put in there from the project because the community builds it up and then you have a huge community. We've, we've seen a few projects do that. So that's what makes 100X. But we have too many of them creating money grabs where they have no plan, they launch it and they're waiting for us to blow it up for them. It don't work that way. On that note, man, let me share real quick my Wolverina. I came yeah, yesterday and talk about it, right? And if you go and look at the uh, Dex tool right now, it's sitting solid at six zeros two. I went to sleep last night, woke up, my money was still in there. I like that. So it's a saw play, and normally I don't see them saw plays lasting long. So let's enjoy that one. Take a look at it on saw. Have some fun. No promises. It's totally a meme. We're going to enjoy it. Have some fun. And I think loyal holders are going to get some uh, free tokens. There's some NFTs that were given to some private folks. They get some tokens off that. Do some meme-ish thing to keep people excited. You got to do meme things in the meme space. Thank you, baby. Yeah, absolutely. I think part of the, one of the big things is like shilling your bags aggressively. Like I love communities who do that. Like even like annoyingly, you know, cause sometimes like I know that anybody else out here with like some sort of platform, you know, like do my uh, messages or my uh, notifications are like, it's just so many, it's impossible to keep up. But when I see something, you know, a bunch of times, then obviously I'm going to pay attention. Something to add on Jerry? Yeah, I was going to ask you and Jake, does it get annoying, though? Honestly, being constantly tagged, where you're just kind of like opening your notifications, like, you know what? I don't want to fucking open up these notifications. I'm just going to keep scrolling about my day. Or does it, like, I don't know, man, like, as, as kind of, like, upper, like, level influencer, does it really piss y'all off? Uh, Rodney is, is top-tier level influencer, not upper level. He's, he's number one on the list. But not really. I mean, dude, I, I literally, so back in, I think it was January or February of 2021, I found Shiba Inu. Uh, through the community they were rating me they were rating me and i was like if this tweet gets five i just put out a tweet like if this tweet gets 200 likes or 300 likes i'll buy some shiba inu that was before the first ever run in april 2021 so i found most of my gems i mean i found pretty much all of my gems through community members like i i don't really go on dex tools and go on dex screener it's like i i see what's hot 
someone comments, I, I put out a tweet. People think it's engagement farming, but it's like, that's how I find my best investment. So I keep doing it. But I put out a tweet saying, hey, what's the next thousand X? There's a token I've never heard of that has, you know, that has a comment that has 150 likes and 100 retweets. I look into it and there's a chance it's a gem. So, uh, no, I don't get annoyed with it at all. I, I actually encourage it and want it. No, Jake is being humble, man. Jake's actually absolutely killed the algorithm. Actually taught me uh, how to, uh, you know, engage with the community and stuff like that. But no, I don't get annoyed with it. Like, I like that sort of stuff. And to be honest, like, even if I was annoyed with it, it wouldn't matter. But it doesn't annoy me at all. Like, like, like I said, like, sometimes you need to see something like a bunch of times before you really catch on. And what I also really like is like communities who like, like Ginger, like we'll put like some sort of like, take your PFP and like edit it or something like that, or make a video. I think that's hilarious. And I think those memes are funny. So absolutely not. But uh, next we have, I think, yeah. or go ahead, Wadi. Oh, no, I was going to say, and me, I've been learning from just watching you guys and I did notice, like, my engagement, bro, was kind of dead, like, around the 1 point to 2 point average percentage. And ever since I started asking questions, like, what's the next gem and stuff like that, I have, it has gone up significantly. So it's not annoying at all because, actually, it helps everyone, in my opinion. Yeah, and then I hope people that, like, follow us, like, will go read those comments, like, oh, who's commenting the most, like, who has the most engagement and stuff like that, like, that actually helps other people look for stuff, too, so, dude, great point. Uh, next, we have Earn. What's up, Earn? I'm good, man. Yeah, this is an <clears throat> interesting uh, conversation about, like, 100x um, and crypto, because it's always been that starting point, right? I think most people know that if you go from 1k to 100k, you've done 100x. You go from uh, 10 million to a billion, you know, and so on and so on, you know, right? So, um, yeah, it's all about that starting point, that where it came from, and how much money you're going to put into the project. If you're only going to put in, you know, a couple hundred bucks, then, yeah, playing around with a 100K project is fine. But that's like, why would you put a couple hundred bucks into Bitcoin? You know, it's probably going to do a 10x, you know, in the next several years, but you would want to do that more in um, prior lower cap plays if you're only playing with a little bit of money. Basically, I'm saying larger amounts of money going to you know larger cap plays. Uh, that's how that really works. You don't put you don't put twenty thousand bucks into a project that's a hundred k market cap. That's just fucking stupid. Um, but yeah, you got. I think everyone should focus on liquidity and market cap ratios because what you put in should be respective to like how much liquidity is there because that's going to be the multiples that you're going to get. But uh, yeah. Uh, when it comes down to influencers or who's pushing the project and having money to pay for things, I mean, that all has to be all planned out um, properly, also based on market conditions. But I think people should look at um, how much money they're going to invest, what the current market cap is of the thing they're invested in, and what's the reality of it actually doing 100x. I don't think everyone's going to go look at, I don't know, Bunk, for example, and say it's going to 100x, you know, being at where it's at, but it could probably 5 or 10x. But then you look at something, you know, what we got here uh, up here, like, uh, I don't know, Byte, for example. Yeah, 100x from that's going to get up to, like, like bunks level. When you look at how much money you're going to invest personally and what, how many X's you're looking to get, because that's really, the, that's really comes down to how much money you're putting into it. So it's not as much about the X's, it's how much your money's going to multiple that you're putting in to that project. Yeah, and, like, actually know what's possible, right? Because, like, you see people say, like, so-and-so crypto is going to hit one cent, someone's going to hit a dollar, something like that. Like, sometimes market cap size matter. You know, a lot of these meme coins, you know, the, the supply is so high, you know, it, it's enticing. It's, like, a good marketing thing. And I think that we just kind of run with that in the, uh, the meme coin space. But pay attention to the market cap sizes. Yeah. And, Rodney, I want to give my thoughts because um, they might differ for some some people in here. But I really think, like, in this meme coin space, it. It really all comes down to the community, a lot of it, at least getting like the ball off the ground. Like you could have the greatest developer and I've actually met some like the smartest people. They have like the Elon Musk gene where they can't even really hold a conversation. They're, 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 they're the smartest people when it comes to the blockchain, but they've launched projects. They've gone nowhere. They've gone nowhere because they haven't built a strong community. They haven't done what it needs to take uh, to grow a successful meme coin. And also I like to see a developer with some business experience, you know, like, like they, they, they know how to operate and manage funds. They run successful businesses. 
uh, that, that usually proves to be pretty well or do pretty well. And then also on the influencer side of things, I don't think that influencers are the end all be all, right? We saw that with Pepe. Did, I don't think Pepe had a single influencer, right? Like it was just all organic, but how many Pepe's are there in the world? There's one, two, three, maybe four. I don't think Shiba Inu ever paid influencers either, but those are the exception, right? Those are the exceptions. And I know Saitama too, back in the day, Saitama didn't really pay influencers, but people were getting views. So it's like, if your project is good enough already organically, then you don't need to pay influencers, but it's all about exposure, man. And it's like, if, if I have Rodney make a video or your pop make a video, it's like, it's going to reach 20, 30, 40,000 crypto investors. How many of those will decide to buy? Well, it just depends on how good the project and how, how good the video is. But it's like really those three things for me. It's uh, a developer that's sound, successful, has, you know, some sort of business experience. And honestly, this sounds crazy, Rodney, but I like a developer that has money. And I'll tell you why. How many times did I see a BTFA NFT in, in here all the way you knew? Uh, I'll, I'll just talk about that because, you know, I, I remember, uh, what was his name? Sway? It's like, I, I don't know who that guy was or, or, or most of the developers, but the ones that don't have money, like we talk about the Shiblord, the Shiblord for dog community. I think he had what, like $200,000. He built a successful project. He probably could have made millions, if not tens of millions on dog. It was one of the strongest communities we've seen in the crypto space. And what did he decide to do? He got like $200,000 and he decided to rug pull. So I like a developer that has money because when they get $1 million, $2 million, $3 million in the marketing wallet or in their wallets, they're not going to sell and run, right? They're going to, they don't need the money. They're, they want to build something. So those things combined, I think, lead to a successful project. The community, number one, uh, a really good and business-minded development team uh, who will pay for influencers because that's what's needed for exposure. And then utility comes last in this meme coin space, but I think it still is pretty important. Yeah, that's a good point. And I want to talk about engagement real quick. And like, because sometimes, you know, like a community, it's interesting how it forms because if something is like pumping and everyone's talking about it, like it's almost, it's like, it helps us talk about it, right? If people are engaging with it, if they're reposting it, liking it, stuff like that, like that's one of those things where you don't need to pay for anything because everyone's already talking about it. And it's one of those things that helps grow our platform if we talk about it. So obviously we're going to do that. So but that's a great take, Jake. You know, some of the developers, you know, like you said, with Dog, dude, Dog could have been so great. If it wasn't for, you know, the guy, you know, uh, loading up wallets and pulling liquidity and stuff like that, like that project could have did some insane numbers. But I think that, you know, this person in the space probably maybe needed the money, wanted the money, understood like this space is kind of crazy and some things last for, you know, a, a month. But I think with the community behind it, I mean, he could have made millions. But yeah, man, you see some people, they get a ton of money in front of them, they rug it and they leave and, you know, like show up a few years later and launch a new project. So definitely developers who have money. Uh, Wadi uh, and Ern, you want to add on? Yeah. So what I was going to say, Jake, is that um, Pepe Ship, even Grok, you know, they, they didn't pay no influencers, but they had Deep Pockets. They had the uh, Wales Group, like I told you, the insider trading. So they pump it. I mean, perfect example, uh, just the newest one, Pork. You know, so they, there's ways that you could grab attention for people to want to purchase the coin. But the thing is that, can they make enough noise? Can they pump the price to make it attractive enough so people will actually buy in? Dog, the ship lord, from what I heard, he actually is not broke either. So he had good money. This thing could have been insanely strong. And he decided just out of greed to do what he did. So my opinion, it depends on the intentions also of the that whether they have money or not. Good. Yeah, uh, a few things on back. Um, one, um, yes, uh, it's good if the person or individual behind the project does have money. I do see, though, a number of um, quote-unquote devs flashing um, farm money or scam money from other projects, likely, and showing that, look at this marketing wallet, ten, twenty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000, we're going to spend so much money on this fucking project where they actually have no intention at all of spending a dime on the project, but that caters people in to think that this is going to go somewhere because they see that sitting inside of a wallet. It's a trap. You know, I think that, like, they say that on Star Wars, <laughs> you know? 
Uh, so everybody be careful with that. Just because they're flashing money in front of you doesn't mean they're going to spend money on anything. Yeah, right? It doesn't mean shit. Uh, two, I uh, wanted to add, we're talking about 100x in this chat right now. 100x when? 100x in a day? 100x in a week? 100x in a year? Because 100x in 10 years? Because, like, think about it. If somebody told me that I could make 100x in 10 years, and then people will say, like, that's not a lot of money. I'm like, that's a lot of money, right? Like, what if you, most of you probably believe that Bitcoin's going to go to a million dollar market cap, a million dollars per coin in the next amount of time, right? But a lot, a lot of people come into this space, and it's sad, is that they think they need to make 100x in probably a week or maybe a month tops, or they rotate from one project to another when that doesn't happen, and then they look up all later than it did happen because it was actually a good conviction play with actually real stuff behind it. But I think we should talk about 100x by when, not just 100x, because that's a big thing with people shopping or going off from one crypto project to another, because a number of things will do 100x, but on what timeline is the question? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, it could be any timeline. Now, obviously, we're talking like in the you know the like immediate future or maybe one year, two years, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, man, you know th that's a great point. Or I always talk about that. Like hindsight's always twenty twenty, dude. Like I always like stress out. I mean, not anymore, but you know, it's easy to like think like, damn, ten years ago I should have like you know bought this or I should have gotten into crypto, you know. But the truth is, like, what about ten years from now, man? Like hindsight's twenty twenty, you know. I'd just be happy here in the space and in the grand scheme of things, man. Not a lot of people are into crypto. They're just not. Like, you still go out and talk to people, you know, talk to friends and family. They don't know what the heck is going on with it, you know. So you're still early. So I, I, I would just be grateful you're in the space right now. But, yeah, man. Yeah. We're, we're so early, man. And, like, you're, you're always going to have that time. And I remember when I started going all in on crypto, I think Bitcoin was, like, like, I, I, I bought my first Bitcoin or some Bitcoin. I was young. I was, like, 23 in college. But it was around, like, $3,000. And I think ETH was, like, $300. I took a screenshot uh, of the day I purchased it. And I was still late. It was 2017, and I still thought I was late because I had friends that got in at $100 Bitcoin. So, and I had a friend that got in on the the ETH uh, IPO. So you're always going to be late. Like, but th that is something that's so common. Even my friends, like I have a good buddy here uh, in Orange County, and I was talking to him, and and Ethereum was at $1,200 at the time. I go, bro, put in money to Ethereum. He's like, oh, but you know, it's I, I heard about it at 200 bucks, and it's like now it's at 3k. He could have tripled his money. And he has a lot of money, so he could have put in twenty thousand dollars and have sixty thousand dollars instead. He's just holding cash. But you're always going to have that thought. You're, it's it's always going to be late, but it's really we have to flip the way that we look at it. It's like you're early, you know. Like what's like the same thing with Tesla and Apple. You know, people who found Tesla back when it launched. It's like oh, it's so late. It went up so much, but it's like we're early until Bitcoin's at a million dollars and ETH is at around a hundred thousand dollars. Then it's probably a little bit late. But for now, it's like we're so early to cryptocurrency. What is it? I think Rodney is it like five percent? Less than five percent of the people in the world yeah. own cryptocurrency, something like that. Yeah, and I, I, that's what I—that's what I those that's that's what I remember. Yeah, uh, it's, so, it's, it's less than five percent of the people in the world own cryptocurrency. Wow. Uh, there's a, I, but it is you know a lot of people in America do own cryptocurrency, even though like a lot of my friends, I mean, dude, my my smart friends that invest that have invested investing accounts and brokerages and they. You know, like they, they invest in the traditional stock market. They still don't understand crypto. It's like, bro, just download Coinbase, buy Ethereum. I, we can't make it any more simple for you. 100% agree, brother. All the way you knew. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Jake. Thanks for bringing up my PFP, bro. It's funny that you bring that up. I, uh, I don't know why, but I still really like this monkey picture. Plus, it was... Uh, it was kind of a rare mint. I wasn't. This is was my first delve in it. And NFTs is too bad that it wasn't a project that lived on. But uh, it's nostalgic because I was able to mint something that was rare. Like it's not rare. It's worth worthless and shit, right? But it's it was like it was rare at the time. So it was kind of a hype thing for me, which was cool. But uh, yeah, rare, 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 rare. and it's cool. totally bro. I totally agree with that, dude. Yo, um, <laughs> Yeah, all the way. Down. Uh, you you sound like the professor Jesus, from uh, yeah, Money dude. Heist. What the hell? Bro, is a dog barking at me? Evil. <laughs> I think it's Sway. <laughs> Sway. Sway. He's, on the the block. Block. He's on the blockchain. Yeah, Sway oh. came back. Busted, bro. Your your, your mic is busted. That's what happened. ETFA NFP. Just kidding. All yeah, time. I was just wondering what the heck just happened. Yeah, no, I thought, I thought someone had a sound. I still own like fucking 50 of those BTFA NFTs. You think I can uh, sell them for a couple pennies? Absolutely not. Yeah, you, you might. Ain't nobody buying those. I'll buy some off you. <laughs> all right, thanks, bro.
I, Dude, well, don't 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 even remind me. Like I got, I was excited when they did the other collection because the dude supposedly worked for Marble and all of that. So I got a pretty decent one, dude. That ain't worth nothing, bro. It's just sitting there collecting dust. Yeah, he scammed everyone. He even scammed that guy. You know, he's like, I- I'm sure he sold him the dream of, you know, this is the next big thing, and well, you know, you're gonna do this, and and that's how they get people in. But I- I'm guessing he probably scammed that guy as well, that artist. Well, well, funny story about the uh, BTFA. So I-, I did some promo for them, and then uh, they did something where they were launching on a they launched on the BNB chain and, and, and the uh, Ethereum network, right? And they gave me like some rare, uh, uh, you know, uh, NFT for free, right? And uh, they pulled the liquidity off the BNB chain without really telling anybody. And I was like, I'm not working for you guys. That's a fucking shitty move. So they got mad at me and whatever. So we had a falling out and I saw that NFT. So I just put it on OpenSea for 10K. It's, it's worthless. I just put it on OpenSea for 10K. All of a sudden, Awesome Austin calls me and says, hey, your BTFA NFT sold. So I went to OpenSea and sure enough, it sold for 10K. And this is what, this is what they did. They, they bought my NFT to stick it to me, to, to get it back. They were like, yeah, fuck that guy. You know, so they literally give me 10k. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's the kind of people you're working with. But uh, at least I made yeah. money off that NFT. You know that I didn't buy. But in the long run, bro, you actually won because oh, yeah. you showed the crap and they gave you 10k for it. So that's good. I know, I know, I won. The, the irony is that they were they bought it to stick it to me. Like, yeah, fuck it, we got it. You should have added. You should have added this to zero, Rod. No, they wouldn't do it for it. No, they wouldn't do it. Ten K. I thought it was pushing it. I thought I did think that. Uh, maybe I should have put it uh for more. But that was around when ETH was like twenty five three. So, thanks for the cheese, motherfucker. Um, but let's go ahead and move to uh, Crypto Temple, and then we'll go to DM, and then uh, Gertrude, then Byte, and Malcolm. Hey everyone. Hey Rodney, Jake, Wadi. Good to see you all. Buddha community in the house, baby. What's up? What's up? This is the Buddha. A DeFi project called Crypto Temple. I am here to shill Buddha, but also discuss some of these important topics that are happening um, in the community right now. So basically what's happening with Buddha is we just listed on CoinStore. Um, so we are on our uh, first CEX. And then um, we have some meditations coming up this week, one on Thursday, one on Saturday, and one on Sunday. Just wanted to say that. And then um, we have an Ethereum update coming. That's the dankest sharding update in the cryptoverse on March 13th. So hopefully we'll see some reduced gas fees because these Ethereum gas fees are just getting ridiculous. Um, so to speak to some of what the, the other community members uh, said, um, Earn was speaking about you know, how some developers can just sort of flash money and get people to, uh, to join the, the community and join and get into the coin. And that happened recently with a coin called Spyro. Spyro had the developer rug on the entire community, pulled the Twitter account, and um, he blamed it on the community for all of the fudding. So it, it was a very interesting thing to see just you know, a warning for people out there to be careful. Um, there's still a lot of scams. And this was a pink sale uh, audited project. They were not KYC'd. But uh, still, uh, most people expect, pro- you know, some projects, or at least most projects on pink sale to be sort of valid projects. Uh, so you have to be careful. I think I think the founder of a coin has to have principles. Um, and values that align with that of the community. And, and their job is sort of to engage the community that way. I notice a lot of the developers for these smaller coins, they have no people skills. So it's a, it's a severe disadvantage for a coin developer or uh, somebody in this space not to have any people skills because that means they can't really interface the community. So in that case, it's better just to be like, you know, the, the, the founder of Bitcoin, just disappear, um, it may be, put some developments every once in a while and see if the coin takes off. Um, for me, it is about the community. Of course, you know, you have coins like Pepe that don't have any real utility. Um, and if you have a good utility, you're going to have a good community anyway. So that's just some points I wanted to make. Um, you know, you have the, your shit coin plays and then you have your conviction plays. 
Um, so sometimes you get into a shit coin, it does do a thousand X and you get your profits and it's great, but you know it's not, not something you might want to stick around for. Um, I want to say not everybody is necessary. I mean, we're all looking for that 100X or 1,000X, but at the same time, some of these coins are pretty stable over time. And especially if they've proven the test of time and they have great communities, you can look at it as a store of value, too. So you kind of, you know, a lot of people are frustrated with their banks and the fact that it's still really hard to send money to other people around the world. That's where crypto really comes in and it really shines. So it's, it's sort of like Bitcoin, Ethereum. It's a store of value. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, and uh, Rodney said something about BNB. They do have some pretty big projects. Uh, check out CGPT. Uh, that's like an AI project. I think they're on BNB. Uh, CZ, of course, is the GOAT and always will be. Um, but I think, uh, again, uh, you know, proof of time for a project. If a project has been around for a while, has a good community, um, even if the developer is not always present, uh, I still think those coins have a chance to do 100x or 1,000x. But that's it. Go Buddha, baby. I hope we... Uh, uh, I hope we get some more volume from the new CEX listing. It looks like that's the case, and uh, I hope to see all of you guys in the meditations. Uh, it's definitely a good thing to meditate if in your, you're in this space, because as we all know, there's just a lot of scams, rug pulls, and um, even just uh, even if you're making money, right? Even if you're making the thousand x yeah. or the hundred x, you're not sleeping either. So <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Great point. Before I move on to uh, DM, um, then we have my boy Combat up here. I do want to talk about you said, uh, you know, like I've seen so many developers like like be like anonymous really, and they they speak on a space like for an AMA, and they're just like bad, or they don't know about the project. So I think like being able to speak is still like so important, or at least knowing about the project. Um, it, a big thing we saw in 2021 were, was like people who uh, didn't really they weren't involved with the project, but they kind of represented it. Maybe it was a Telegram mod or something. And you get into a space, and they don't know anything about the project. Like they, they don't know like any of the particulars, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, tokenomics, uh, use case, anything. Like it, it's interesting, but uh, that's important too. So I guess that's being prepared. But we have DM. What's up, DM? And we'll go from DM to Gertrude to Bite. Hey, what's going on, Rodney? What's up, brother? Going, doing good. Doing good. What's going on, Wadi? Jake, how y'all doing? What's up, bro? What's going on? What's going on? So, you know, I'm here always representing uh, the Elmo community. Uh, you know, we're right now running a competition, rating competition, giving away one soul. Uh, so if you want to take part in that uh, right now, uh, just head over to the Elmo coin Solana uh, Twitter. Uh, check them. Uh, check the, the tweets and everything like that. Join the telegram. Uh, so, yeah, we're offering a competition uh, right now. So. Come hang out with us. You know, we're helping growing the community over there. But uh, what I really want to talk about uh, is I want to shout out you and Jake uh, for what y'all are doing for Filecoin right now uh, and sending Corgi crazy. Um, so shout out to y'all for, gi for giving them love. Uh, I, I want to say... I made a video on that, like around I don't know, two hundred k market cap. So, <laughs> yo, I was, you know. <laughs> yo, I was, I was in, I was in Corgi uh, since early January. So I've been up through all the waves, ups and downs, and all that. So yeah, shout out to what y'all doing uh, for Filecoin, and the memes are sending over there. Yeah, and I saw that Filecoin followed them back. So I think it's cool when, like, uh, you know, the native coin, uh, the native network follows their their tokens back. You know, I think that's awesome. So shout out to uh, shout out to Corgi. Yep, yep. That go check mark, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Awesome. Appreciate you, DM. Shout out to the Elmo community. Uh, next, let's go to Gertrude, then Byte. And then we'll go. I, I want to talk, uh, talk to Comment real quick. Well, thank you so much, Rodney, once again, for inviting me to come up here to speak. Hey, welcome back. I am here speaking on behalf of Pepe Point on Solana. We have survived. A major attack. We went from 8 mil to 69k. Most of our uh, previous community leaders, members, they dumped on us. They disconnected, they deactivated our website. They deactivated all of our social links. And we were left flat on the ground. But I can tell you, 
with the community that we have, with the team of few people that stood up and said, we are not leaving and we're going to bring this back. We work. And we establish our website. We establish all of our social link. And we took this Pepequen on Solana from 69K on Sunday to 1.7 mil yesterday. So the community is back. We have taken over. We are now community owned. And we are determined to build this. We went from a membership in our TG of 465, we doubled that, we are now 811, and we have our VC going 24 seven. We have put a very strong community, marketing community together, and I bring to this community my 20 years of experience in project management and Lean Six Sigma, and together with the community, we are going to take Pepecoin on Solana to one uh, 100x so thank you thank you very much you're welcome gertrude and i like to come back when told me someone told me you went to sixty nine thousand dollars, i thought it was over so congrats to you appreciate it thank you you're welcome next let's move to bite what's up bite dude i saw that uh post that uh, uh, J uh justin sun retweeted the uh bite post yeah 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 what's up man it's your french canadian bus driver right here welcome ça va, mon ami? Bonjour. Ça va bien, merci. Ça va bien, good. Yeah, yeah, Justin Sun this morning just decided to retweet it a little by tweet. And uh, anyway, got everybody so hyped. And Well, we're pumping right now. Well, not forget that he's the number two biggest holder. And we got, uh, well, Dino. And uh, anyway, uh, the community is hype. And uh, anyway, uh just type into Grok Elon's AI dog and see how bullish that is. Three words. Three words. Elon's AI dog. Let's go, baby. I, I repeat. I repeat. Elon's AI dog. One more time, uh, please. I didn't hear you. Uh, Elon's AI dog in fun mode, in regular mode, any mode you want. Who's Elon's AI dog? And we got a crazy organic community. The dev was there. He did his job. He's still lurking in the back. Like, how can you list in five days in Poloniex? Go on the token sniffer and put in the buy contract. Go at the bottom. Unique contract. It's not a copy paste or a steal from another contract. It's a unique contract. The dev did his job. He's still lurking in the back. But... Five days, Poloniex. Anyway. Nice. And the never had, yeah. I love it. You know, shout out to Byte, shout out to the Byte community, and it's good to see Justin's son, you know, giving some meme coin love. You don't see a lot of people do that, you know, like retweet stuff like that, so. Yeah, but it. in May uh, in May of uh, last year, he tweeted a tweet about investing into meme coins he liked and yeah. dots in his wallet so he probably did that with bite people were saying oh, he didn't buy and didn't buy like when the transfer was made to his wallet it was worth close to 300k who will give that to a billionaire nobody the guy is and poloniex in five days and now he retweets a bite tweet like it don't be you don't need to be in rocket science to like the guy know about Byte. He probably bought Byte. He sees the narrative. He understand that we're going in the like AI is going to be so big. And now with Byte, you got three of the biggest words. You want me to repeat the three words? Yeah, one more time, baby. Okay, one more time. And for I say, Elon Chien AI can't get better it. than that. We're going to billions. We're going to be the top dog. We love everybody. Everybody's going to make it. But do not fade bite. Because we're know, here to stay and we will not fucking quit. Sorry for my swearing. En français, s'il vous plaît. Let's go. En français, on l'a au propos. On s'en va des billions, des milliards. Let's go. You know, out of all the ERC20 uh, meme coins, bites my biggest bag. And I bought the dip like four times already. So I got a fat bag. I'm ready to go to the moon, baby. Retire me, bite. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So Thank you, you very much, everybody. Love everyone. Let's make it, man. 
2024 is the year we're all going to make it. Let's go, Bide. Appreciate you, brother. Next, let's move to Malcolm OX. What's up, brother? Bless up, bless up. It's Malcolm That's pretty, Zero X. That's, that's pretty clever, though. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well by yourself, brother. I'm happy. All, All right. right. Uh, this being the 59th anniversary of the great Malcolm X assassination. Um, I don't want to do it the dis disrespect of calling it a meme token, but it is a token that is being launched today. This is going to be fresh off the ground. Uh, it'll be launched on BNB in just a few hours. Uh, and there's a very cool utility in that a percentage of every trade will be set aside for a DAO. And folks will be able to apply for grants directly from the um, from the DAO. So we're looking at folks who are um, interested in setting up um, homeschooling, um, mustards, mosques, who are always uh, asking for donations, and just anybody, um, police departments, law enforcement, anyone who could use a grant um, can apply for it via the BAM, um, by any means necessary, including crypto token. So if you want to get in on something that's launching fresh from the ground floor, um, definitely follow back, hit me up, and stay up to date on when it goes live later today. Nice. Appreciate you, brother. Shout out to your project. Jack, you have something to add on? No, I just wanted to shield the thing I've been trying to shield for the past couple of weeks. Oh, shield. Is Whatever. it live? It's not, it's not live yet. The Twitter's live. Okay. But it's building up. I, I pinned it up in the top, Rodney. Gotcha. It is finally here. All right. Rubber ducky coin with a and As you notice, though, if you read the if you read the ten post, it's just like I said it's going to be Polygon based, but there's also other chains attached to it too as well. As you can kind of see in the uh, pin post, it's going to be. Uh, like I said going to be something like very big. The stuff's going to roll out over the next couple of weeks and whatnot. But uh, we're going to build up the community and everything like that. And yeah, yeah, man, it's finally here. The Twitter. And I just want you just to take a take a look at, take a look at it, man. Take a look at it. Yeah, Jared, can you tell us exactly when it's launching and the token contract, please? <laughs> uh, no, buddy. I, you know I can't. What's wrong with you, Ganja? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I gave you guys a follow back, so I'll, I'll be tuned in. Uh, nice. Let's go. What's up, Comet? How you doing, brother? What's going on, man? Hump day, meme coins, chill and chill. The ultimate. If you're not humping, man. you're chilling. If you're not chilling, you're humping, baby. <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, you know, I'm just here to chill again. I don't have anything to show, but I just wanted to comment on the Justin Sun bite situation. That's dope. I've seen him tweet. Uh, somebody said, yeah, he tweeted last year he likes meme coins. I've been following him for a long time. And, uh, yeah, he does tweet about meme coins. He says things like, when are meme coins coming to Tron and things like that. Like, he's bullish on it. And I love a powerful person in crypto, a CEO type of person, a C-suite executive that has respect for meme coins because you could say that there's no intrinsic value and you know maybe there's not compared to a utility coin, but I've always been a meme coin believer because it brings adoption. It onboards people into the ecosystem. And so a founder, a C-suite exec, somebody who understands that, that's bullish on meme coins, that's bullish to me. It makes a lot of sense to me. Absolutely, uh, you know, and the truth is, like, a lot of people got into crypto through the form of meme coins because of meme coins. Like, they wouldn't be in crypto unless you know meme coins brought them here, and, th and that was my case. Like, I, I knew about, like, I had Robinhood, I knew about Bitcoin, I knew about Ethereum. Like, I didn't know about it, but I, I saw it. I bought some just because people were saying buy it. But then, you know, I bought meme coins, and then I started like looking at meme coins online, and then I started learning about crypto as a whole like, all together because of that. So, yeah, man, they're fun, they're silly, and it is cool to see someone like. Uh, Justin Sun get behind something like Byte, and I'm I'm super bullish on Byte, and I don't talk about it much in the space, but um, you know, it's a, it's an awesome narrative. It has a great floor. I mean, one of the the two top holders, one's uh, it's Whale Fud, that big page, and he has he's so rich, like he doesn't need to sell it. You know what I mean? He held that Dino Ethereum uh, meme token forever, hasn't really sold any, and that's been around for years. And you know, he he said he's going to do the same thing with Byte, so got to believe him. You know, it's and that's a huge floor. You know, Byte's pumped to. You know, 20 million market cap, it's dumped down to like, you know, 8, 9 million, but it hasn't really gone any lower than that. So it has a good floor, and I'm bullish on that uh, in the in the future. And that's cool that Justin Sun is out there uh, showing some meme coins, some support, and I hope some other people will do the same, you know. Uh, it does help it, it does help the space. Um, appreciate you comment. Uh, next, let's go ahead and go to uh, Timsky, then we'll go to Big Time. Hey, boys, what's up, DJs? Jake, Rodney. 
Uh, you're going to have to start calling this little Canada the amount of boys up I'm here. I'm take it over, baby. Dude, you're going to have to run subtitles for all of them uh, Frenchies from Quebec. Uh, when it comes to finding that 100x, it, to me, it's honestly oh, no. all luck. All luck. Uh, the amount of... It, the amount of, if you Increase the amount of darts you're going to throw and you're going to hit that bullseye sometime. Uh... Because you can't spend all your time on Twitter in telegrams. It's just not possible. Uh, so when you're looking for that hype, you kind of need all the help you can get. And there's only one Rodney. There's only one Jake Gagan, right? So if if Joe Schmo puts out what's the next 1,000x, he's going to get no traction, right? So uh, there is a new community out there. It's called Addicted. And the dev has created a, a Telegram bot that hunts down all of that metadata for you. And it collates it and ranks it and finds some pretty good bangers, sometimes even pre-launch. So uh, get, get over to that AA community. It's a good place. There's a lot of dogs in there, so you know it's a robust, aggressive community. And uh, when you do find those plays, though, send it through a contract reader. And you know if it's coming from me, it's got to be Adventus. And uh, that chart as well is looking very juicy. So Adventus and AA, take a look at that. That's my shill. I love it. Timski doing all the heavy lifting for us. Appreciate you, Timski, man. Appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Thanks. Anytime. Next is going to Big Time, then we'll go to Blazing Pepe. What's up, what's up, guys? I'm going to be real quick. I'm going to be quick. First off, shout out to the Pepe on Soul community. Ass-kicking community. Not stopping. Secondly, let me tell you something. Reflection tokens are not dead. I repeat. Reflection tokens are not dead. Why? Because Earn is in the building, baby. Do not overlook the previous bull markets. What happened to these other reflection tokens? Hundreds of millions. Multi-billions. Now you have earned then stepped on the scene, top dog. Plus they got NFTs to back it. Do not overlook this very much well old undervalued token. That's all I got. I'm gonna be short with it. Big time, you know the vibes. Nice, love it. Yeah, I don't think reflection tokens are dead at all. You know, um, and especially if you get in early to these reflection tokens and you have a decent bag and you hold with all the volume, it could, it could definitely pay off. Hundred percent, man. So I don't think they're dead. There's, there's a there's a really really strong narrative with with reflections tokens that when they get big it it grips people and it's like whether the chart goes up or down we all make more tokens and like that narrative especially to people coming into the space for the first time like that really grips you and you just hold and you're like hell yeah I'm just gonna make more tokens then. One hundred percent, man. It's like it it, it 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 makes it so there's like something bullish to talk about even when the chart's dumping. You know. Great point. Nice to meet the Blazing Pepe. What's up, baby? How you been? What's up, Rodney? What's up, everyone up here in the panel? Um, uh, it's, it's great just to be here, boys. It's just a blessing to have another beautiful and blessed day. The sun's shining bright over here on the East Coast. I don't know where everyone's at, but I hope y'all's having a beautiful, blessed day as well. Um, just want to come in and drop a quick shill right quick, Rodney. Yes, I'm Blazing Pepe, the founding developer of Pepe Project X. We call it the Pepe X Protocol. And... I just want to give some updates right quick. I just want to say that we started out with 420 trillion tokens, 690 billion. We have burned that supply all the way down to only having 280 trillion tokens left in existence. We've burned 128 trillion tokens thus far off everyone's um, participation, such a small community putting things together with small amounts of trading taking place but creating a, a, big, a big price performance. And when you look at how many tokens that we've burned, we've given back at the current price, we've given back $21,800 to the holders that's holding PayPayX tokens. And that's why we have diamond hands in the community that started out with small investments, and now they're sitting on 10 and 20X investments, and they know that they're literally holding gold in their hands. It's better than gold, guys. It's PayPayX. But we have an NFT giveaway going on right now, Rodney. All you have to do is send a dollar to the blazing pepe um, rewards.eth wallet, 
and you're entered in to get this giveaway in $200 in Pepe X. I know I said we were going to do a $1,000 giveaway, but you have to listen to your community sometimes, man. And when you're a small project at a small market cap like ours, you really don't want somebody just um, making a $1,000 sale on your chart. So I had to listen to my community. You know, it's a community-based project. I listen to the community as well. So we didn't just want to give away $1,000 for someone to dump on the chart. But we felt like we were comfortable with giving away $200. So you get a free NFT and you get $200 worth of PayPayX just by entering with a dollar. And we're going to be running that all week and we'll probably give it away on Friday. But thanks for having me up, Rodney. And oh yeah, guys, the tokenomics. 4% buy and burn on every trade is pumping your bags, baby. It's not a reflection token. You don't get more tokens in your wallet. Just the tokens you hold become more the share of the pool. And with PayPayX, oh, Rodney, man, we I figured something big out. Um, people that's holding PayPayX, you don't want to be a liquidity provider. Due to the deflationary nature of PayPayX, if you are a liquidity provider, you're doing nothing but losing PayPayX tokens. And PayPayX tokens in the end are going to be more valuable than any other token that is backing it. So you don't want to be losing PayPayX tokens. You actually want as many as you can because the first amount you get will probably be the most amount because it's deflationary. <laughs> nice. That's well, I have my, yeah, absolutely. I have my bag, dude, and uh, I haven't sold anything. I, I, I think I have a 10X already, but uh, I'm holding to Valhalla, baby. Nice. Thank you, Blaze and Pepe. Roddy, is it just me or do you just want to go to Tennessee, drink a Budweiser with that Bro, guy, I'm, smoke I'm some saying, cigarettes, and listen to some country music? I mean, I'm saying, God, damn. I mean, I'm already in Virginia, but, you know. Hey, I'm right here. I'm not too far from Rodney. I'm right here in North Carolina. I, I plan on meeting Rodney one day here soon in the future. We're going we're gonna to have that beer, that's for sure. Absolutely. Hey, God bless you, brother, and go Tar Heels, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Go Tar Heels, baby. There you go, baby. God bless America. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Once we hit a billion dollar market cap, Blazing Pepe, we'll fucking tear it up, dude. We'll do some real degenerate shit over here on the East Coast. East Coast, not much to do, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Appreciate you, Blazing Pepe, and appreciate your consistency, brother. Uh, next, let's go. I had some speakers over here, but they dropped down a little bit of stage fright. Uh, we do have uh, memes and crypto. What's up, baby? And it looks like memes and crypto also. What are you guys? You guys scared to talk to me? I was gonna say, bro. There's no new speaker up here. Well, I, I approved a bunch, but they keep leaving. But we have Celos. What's up, Celos? Allow me to uh, speak. Um, how are you guys doing? Doing well. How about yourself, brother? Pretty great. Pretty, Pretty good, great. man. Pretty good. Actually, at work, man. But, you know, I'm on my little break, and uh, I figured I'd log in and see what's up. Uh, but, hey, have you guys heard of, um, of Kalana on Solana? Hell yeah, baby. I'm actually going to be putting out a video for them later on today. And I think they're having a space tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pretty bullish. Yes. Yes, sir. It's only 100 million tokens. Those things can get chewed up rather quickly. Um, also, a uh, pretty pretty strong community, man. And I think they, they want to onboard. They want to use their, their product, which is a, a, a drink, right? Kalana on Solana as a crypto drink to, to onboard, I believe, Web 2 into Web 3. And I think through a drink... Uh, that's pretty bullish, man. Uh, I think they're going to be at the Paris, or they're sponsoring the Paris Block um, Block Week or something like that. And I think they they partnered up with Godbit. So to me, man, these guys are. I think they're they're pretty humble, man. They're they're just chilling in the back, um, building. But um, I think it's pretty bullish, man. What's what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, absolutely. So I've skimmed over the project. I, I got to do some in-depth research, but I like it. I mean, we've seen uh, Snake do Snake Energy, and that was pretty popular, so I like it. Yeah, I've, I've actually made a video. I've talked to the devs a lot. They're, they're a base development team. Cool project. Uh, I think the drink, I don't know if the drink's live yet, but it's like they're they're just trying to bridge the gap. It's like they're going to be sponsoring Solana events. Uh, they're giving drinks out to influencers. It's a good dev team, strong community, but I so far, I like the project. They seem like uh, legit guys, and Anytime that a development team and token has like made it through month one, month two, and they're still spending money to onboard influencers and have partnerships, like I'm sure NFT Paris is not uh, cheap. So it just kind of shows you a little bit of commitment, uh, not even a little bit, a lot of bit of commitment from the dev team. So I've actually had multiple conversations with those guys. They invited me to the space tomorrow, uh, which Rodney said 11 a.m. PST. I, I usually leave the gym around that time, but I'll try to hop on. But yeah, they seem like a legit team that's trying to build. And anytime that a development team does that, it's 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 a developed development team that i want to support yeah that's right man thank you so much for, for having me guys i uh appreciate it and um hopefully i'll you know i'll see you guys next time thank you so much have an awesome day. come back soon come back soon huh absolutely bro. Sounds, sounds good sounds good guys thank you so much 
You're welcome, brother. Shout out to Kalan. Uh, we have Nico Barrett next. What's up, Nico? How you doing? Hey, I'm good, man. Uh, shout out to uh, you and Jake. You guys are awesome, man. I see you guys always hustling and you got amazing content. Um, yeah, hey, I uh, just wanted to know if you guys ever heard of uh, a coin called Bitcoin. It's uh, it's an interesting one. Nope, I've never heard yeah. of that coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, can't, I don't know. Your your logo looks super familiar, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured you might recognize it, maybe, possibly. But the thing is, is this one's on Solana. So it's kind of interesting with the transaction fees being lower and faster. Um, so, yeah, 21 million supply, great community. Uh, the developer was initially there, rugged it, went to about 2K. Uh, we ran it back up to over 600K, then went back down to like 40K, and then almost a million. So, you know, there's a lot of things going on. There's a huge community there. Um, well, at least the community support is there. Um, we're definitely not leaving. And yeah, man, I mean, think about convincing someone on the street, just a normie. Like, how, how hard is it to convey... Uh, meme token all love to everyone else by the way i know we're all going to make it but just how hard is it to communicate that to someone right especially someone in an older generation like uh, it, it's not hard to talk about bitcoin you know what i mean just it's about it's just just hey this one's just bitcoin basically 2.0 so if you guys want to check it out uh it's a great community and yeah there's a lot going on so uh please uh and thanks so much for giving me the time Absolutely, brother. I appreciate you, man. And yeah, we've seen like a lot of uh, those projects like do the same ticker symbol and stuff like that actually do pretty well. Uh, we saw, what was it? Bitcoin, um, XRP. XRP, Ethereum, uh, Ethereum. There's been a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but guys, like how many, dude, like, you know, even the normies, they don't know what XRP is, dude. Like they, they don't know these, these, these altcoins. They don't, they don't know them. And, and BSC was, you know, like, Come on, that's how a lot of people got into DeFi in the first place. But those transaction fees still, they're like that's why Solana is going to be taking over, you know. So Bitcoin on Solana, that's like two thousand nine all over again, guys. Awesome. Well, hell yeah, bro. Shut some up. would say, some would say, others not. <laughs> I will say that if the dev rugged and he's gone, at least he's gone and we know what happened. Real Bitcoin's dev owns 5% of the supply. And I pray to God every day that Satoshi Nakamoto is dead. Because if he's alive and he sells that 5%, he actually could kill us all. He's definitely alive and he's probably the uh, current owner of X, Tesla, and SpaceX. That's my thoughts. Just read his book. Read the Elon Musk book. No, no, no. His book. Read, read the Elon Musk book, and uh, Musk when book. Elon Musk back in 2000 wanted to start a global crypto or uh, global payment website called X.com, there's a lot of things that you're like, wow, this guy could probably, like, Elon Musk revolutionized the car industry, Elon Musk is sending fucking rockets and revolutionized the space industry, Elon Musk is putting neural leaks in, in people's brains, Elon Musk is revolutionizing the Wi-Fi industry with Starlink. You don't think that when he start try to start a he, he's the what the, the the founder one of the founders of PayPal you don't think that he might have created Bitcoin back in the day I don't know there's a lot of synchronicity I mean, there I, mean, I think he's the founder personally I mean it doesn't work out you know but like he probably I wouldn't I wouldn't like come clean because like who wants to deal with all that you know what I mean of course like, he wouldn't come clean I I honestly think there's a pretty high likelihood that Elon Musk is Satoshi Nakamoto okay so so here's right, a good okay. one here's a good one. I'm sorry to say, but you're wrong. So, according to this guy in a video, the owner of Bitcoin is Putin because he wanted to destroy the American economy. That shit was hilarious. That's all. Could be. Could be. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's our time. It's been a fantastic conversation today with lots of people hanging out with us. Guys, you guys are the absolute best. It's been a pleasure. And, we'll, of course, we'll be live tomorrow, Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to hang out with you guys again. Jake, uh, close out, baby. Yeah, guys. You know, it's important to uh, talk about meme coins. But, it, you know, we have to remember what day it is. It's hump day, guys. So make sure to get out there. Get some humping in. Get some cardio in. Make yourself feel good. Release some extra tension. And uh, the boys will be back tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. PST, and we'll be refreshed. We're going to get a lot of humping in today, guys. A lot of meme coin uh, buy. So uh, have a good day, guys. We appreciate you, and we'll see you soon, huh? I'm humping everything, God damn it. All right, guys. Peace. Elon Musk is Satoshi Nakamoto. Bye. Yes, he is. I agree. Why do you wrong? Okay, bye. Why do you wrong? Wrong. Yeah. <laughs>